Welcome to Star Trek Theory, where we look at ideas, theories, and speculation in all things Star Trek. If there's one thing in Discovery that's really been divisive, it's the strange new look of the Klingons in the series. They look nothing like normal Klingons. In fact, they look like another race. Some have called them Klingon Orcs. Worse still, the series is supposed to take place before the other series. So it really doesn't make much sense. And I think personally, this is one of those things that really turned off a lot of fans right from the start. But what if there was a way we could explain the Klingon look? And even better, what if this look wasn't accidental at all? So the obvious answer is just that the makeup team was just too ambitious trying to reinvent the wheel and reinvent the look of the Klingons. But what if there's actually an in-universe explanation and one that the show may possibly use and it's been its secret plan since the start? So let's dive in, go back to the original look where everything started and that was the next generation Klingons and specifically Worf. I am Worf, son of Moog. The thing is, as much as we all loved Worf, he wasn't really the original look of the Klingons, because they had quite a human-like appearance in the original series. Klingons? Over there, and over there. Those are Klingons? Mr. Worf? They are Klingons. And it is a long story. What happened? Some kind of genetic engineering? A viral mutation? We do not discuss it with outsiders. So those comments are the biggest clue because Worf seems to indicate that the Klingons are highly embarrassed about something that's happened in the past, which has made the Klingons look human-like. And of course, if we go back to Enterprise, we find out what that answer is. First of all, the Klingons looked like they did in The Next Generation, but an episode of season four of Enterprise explained that the Klingons had tried to genetically enhance themselves during this period using human augment embryos. This is actually quite a cool storyline and it delved into Earth's eugenics past with the augments from Khan's time being mixed with Klingons to try and create super soldiers. In the process of trying to create these super soldier Klingons, the side effect was that it actually removed their ridges. So it left them in a state that we're familiar with in the original series Ridgeless Klingons. Will he restore our appearance? I don't know. How do you expect us to return home looking like this? We will be outcasts. There will be no place for us in the Empire. Your heart is still Klingon. Are you certain of that? As a result of that episode, the virus spread throughout all of the Klingon Empire, and it caused all of the Klingons to lose their ridges. They became human-like in their appearance a hundred years before Kirk. Millions of my people will have to live with this disfigurement. It'll be passed on to our children. And that's the last we saw of them. So what have they been doing that hundred years between Enterprise and Discovery? Almost no one has seen a Klingon in a hundred years. It seems to me this was a huge event in the Klingon Empire. And it's not hard to imagine that the Klingons would have been devastated to have their Klingon heritage mixed like this with the humans, all of their ridges removed. It became a genetic trait which passed down through generations. So my theory is that within those hundred years, the Klingons tried somehow to get their ridges back. These would have been genetic experiments to regain their Klingon heritage and somehow regrow their ridges. They could have decided to try and use ancient Klingon DNA, which would have existed in bodies of ancient Klingons. And maybe by accident, they activated the wrong genes, and rather than just regrowing their ridges, they could have activated older aspects of their genetics. Perhaps in the process, they just went too far, and in essence, de-evolved to an earlier time. Because we saw in the Next Generation episode where Worf de-evolved that very, very ancient Klingon of the past. Almost the Neanderthal of Klingons. And they were actually quite beast-like. So if we compare the look of the new Discovery Klingons, it literally looks like they're middle ground between the ancient Neanderthal Klingon and the modern, usual Klingons. They look like savages in contrast. So could it be that the Discovery Klingons are just that midpoint and a result of some kind of DNA enhancement to try and bring back their ridges. The result of a decades-long genetic manipulation. 
We've seen in the next generation that the Klingons will go to great lengths with genetics. For example, they cloned one of their greatest warriors, Kaelas, resurrecting him from some ancient DNA. So it's definitely something they've done. And it just so happens that the very first word spoken in the discovery from Tukuvma himself pretty much explains it in a similar way. <laughs> The use of the term atoms by atoms is especially striking considering the whole DNA background. So Takufma's whole idea is that they should remain Klingon. And actually this makes perfect sense in the context that the Augment virus a hundred years ago had stripped the Klingons of their racial identity. They would be extremely bitter and angry about this, and he acts as a rallying cry to get back their Klingon heritage by attacking the humans who they essentially blame. We come in peace. It's interesting to note also that Discovery picks up ancient relics of the Klingon past, as if they suddenly become more relevant during this period, and the Klingons are far more interested and concerned with the bodies of the Klingons. Could all of this be a result of them having that event a hundred years ago, losing their riches, and wanting to get back their Klingon heritage? This is augment DNA. You were trying to create Klingon augments. But Sue's experiment. There were some unanticipated side effects. The cranial ridges started to dissolve. This new orc-like Klingon look may have just happened recently in the last few decades. And ultimately, it must be the goal of the scientists to get their ridges back. But they just went too far. This could have been a struggle for decades for the Klingons to regain their original look, constantly battling with the virus, and their scientists trying to balance how far to go. Maybe during Discovery we're just on that rebound where they've gone too far and they're starting to come back. As time goes by, their appearance will continue to morph and change back to what they want. And that's exactly what we see happening in Season 2, where the Klingon features are slowly morphing back. They've regrown their hair now and several of the harsh bony ridges have now been softened. Laurel, who we see in both seasons, is the easiest person to compare. And perhaps given time, she'll continue to revert back to the original Klingon look. We may see her in Strange New Worlds, which will take place after Discovery Season 2, and it could be that we see an even softer featured Laurel. From this point forth, you may call me Mother. If this is correct, then we would see the continued morphing of the Klingons back into the next generation era Klingons. And that's exactly what we see in Star Trek Into Darkness Klingons, because by that point, which takes place after Discovery Season 2, they're just starting to get things under control. The ridges here look so perfect, almost as if they've been engineered. And they obviously put great emphasis on them, since they've adorned them with jewellery a sign that they are proud of getting the look back. But what about the original series in the Kirk era Klingons, which takes place another five years after this? Is there a way to explain their human-like appearance? And the answer here is Vok. So Vok was turned into a human. When you watch Discovery Season 1, it seems that Laurel's house had the original augment virus. <laughs> So it could be that they used that on him again to turn him into a human-looking Klingon. It's you. 
But Vox a little different to usual because he's not just looking like a human, he's also had his internal organs changed. Obviously something happened in the process and his personality is now being completely changed to Ash Tyler. But along the way, as part of the process, he was probably exposed to the original Augment virus. What if Vok now inspires a whole new cult of Klingons, who've had enough of all the genetic changes and just want to embrace this non-rich human look? He could kick off a revolution. Being so close to Laurel, the Klingon Chancellor, to put him in a position to effect this change and even inspire others to adopt his look. We already saw hints of that in Discovery Season 2, where he's starting to get a cult-like following. So what if this cult, with Laurel as Chancellor, decide to embrace the human no rich look? Realizing they'd gone too far with all the genetic manipulation of trying to get their ridges back, they just embraced the human look. Her house has the original Augment virus, and she could just force it on her top generals. And in a way, something like this could even be poetic for Vok's character arc. He started off as a torchbearer for the Remain Klingon movement, but could have inspired the human cult look. So by the time of Kirk, the Klingons are once again looking like those human augments. And we may not have even known it at the time, but there could have been a civil war among the Klingons, with some being the augment type, and others being the into darkness like Klingons. Chancellor Rell and Vok could be leading the augment type. And it could be eventually that Chancellor Rell loses this war, and so ultimately anyone with the Augment look is given the new viral antidote, and they can once and for all set the Klingons back to their original look. This would explain by the time of the motion picture, we start to see the Klingons with ridges again, and they finally fix this genetic curse which has been on them for over a hundred years. It would also explain how some Klingons like Kor and Kang could have looked human when interacting with Kirk, but years later turned back to that original Klingon look. This whole thing would have been a completely embarrassing period for the Klingons and explains Worf's original line. Those are Klingons? They are Klingons. And it is a long story. So what do you think about this? Is it something you can see happening? And could it explain all of these inconsistencies? If this is true, I also predict that the Klingons in Picard Season 2 will look just like we've known them all along. The next generation Klingons because the Discovery Klingons were just looking like that for that unique period of time. Worf, if he shows up in Season 2 of Picard, will be looking just like he always does. And in fact, I find it extremely interesting that during the first episode of Picard, they showed a picture of Worf as he normally looks. And I personally think this is deliberate. They could have chosen any screenshot of Captain Picard, but they chose this one with Worf standing by his side. And I think it's to send us a message that there's a plan in the works. At least that's what I hope. Also, because Discovery's in the future now, the series which could continue this storyline is Strange New Worlds. And there's a lot of possibilities for them to play with this and to bring it all together, to tie up loose ends with the Klingons, and literally act like a bridge between Discovery and the original series, and give us a much richer experience overall. It will really allow us to look back at Discovery in a completely different light. But let me know what you think in the comments down below. And please like and subscribe for more ideas, theories, and speculation on all things Star Trek. As always, thanks for watching and track on.